Welcome back to Save for More. I am Luke Goodish, and I am stoked for this series. I'm going through every Rocky, one, two, three, four, five, and Rocky Balboa, extrapolating every life lesson, every, you know, philosophical gem in these babies, uh, because these movies changed my life. Like, legitimately, fundamentally, Rocky has changed my life, and I return to them, each one on multiple occasions for a multitude of reasons to to give myself, interject myself with a lesson, a different lesson. So if you saw uh, the video I put up on Instagram the other day about um, how fitness is not optional, you'd see that Rocky kind of saved my life, just like he stopped the Cold War. Uh, Rocky saved my life. I wouldn't probably be here, um, or potentially, I have the potential of not being here if it wasn't for seeing Rocky. I was, I have a heart condition, and I was born with that. And last year, some medical complications happened. I had some clots. And the doctors told me, essentially, that if it wasn't for the shape that I was in, I would be dead. I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for me working out and having this affinity for fitness. And that stemmed from Rocky, my dad showing me a Rocky marathon when I was a kid. So these movies have always been changing my life. Uh, I've always been a part of my life. And they, cha they change a bunch of people's lives. And they're always on the internet for fitness motivation and, you know, workout motivation, but there's so much more in Rocky than just the fitness lessons. So I really wanted to extrapolate every lesson that I could. And even this, I have six pages of notes here for Rocky one today. And even that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you watch these movies with your own paradigm from your own life experience, then you're going to find all kinds of lessons that are, that are uh, pertinent to you and important to you. So I definitely recommend watching the film yourself. These are just the lessons that I, um, noticed on this watch through. So let's start with the making of Rocky itself. There is a lesson in Sylvester Stallone's life and in the creation of Rocky itself that I think is important and a great place to start. So Stallone had this idea for Rocky for years. I mean, this was just burning in his heart. He drew pictures of him all the time. He had ideas percolating in his brain all all the time for, I forget how long at this point, but I think it was like 10 years or so that he really, really had this idea burning in him. And I think this is a lot of us. You know, there's something in us. There is a Rocky in us. There's a story, you know, a book idea, some kind of invention or business opportunity. We have something calling us and screaming inside of us to get out. And we have to find our courage and um, we have to find our ability to fight for that idea and get it out there. Because imagine a world where Stallone let Rocky just percolate in his brain, then he died, and then it was just trapped in, a, you know, in his coffin with him, stuck in a graveyard somewhere that we never, we never saw that. It was never a part of our world. That scares me, and that's what Saved for More is all about. We eat, each of us has something inside of us. There is more in all of us. We all have a Rocky. And I want to help you find that and extrapolate it and get it into the world. Put that out there because the world needs it. Um, you could really help change someone else's life. Um, but you have to find the courage and you have to be willing to fight for it. Because Stallone, you know, he was 30. He, was, he had to sell his dog to keep his apartment. He was not in a good place. And the studio said, hey, we'll buy the film, but we don't want you in it. We want to put some kind of big name actor. And he said, look, no, uh, you're going to buy it. And if you're going to buy it, it's going to be with me in it or you can't have it. I have to play Rocky or you can't have it. Now, that's a huge risk he took, but he knew his worth. He knew what Rocky was worth. He knew, you know, he knew his value and he wasn't willing to compromise just to take the, uh, the money to help him out. Because he was looking long term. He knew, look, this could change my life. I, I know the value here. I'm not fucking settling you're not pushing me out of this i'm rocky okay and look how that worked out for him so take that as a lesson to to fight for what's inside of you get it out there and don't compromise on it be willing to start um without optimal performance uh in some sense you know what i mean if you want to start a business start with a, a crappy cheap website fine and build it up to what you want but don't compromise on the idea philosophically so that's lesson number one. It's the making of Rocky. Look into more of that. Look at some. There's a documentary 
uh, on the making of Rocky that I would really recommend. I forget what it's called, but I'll put it in the description below. That that just that documentary always lights a fire um, under me. And there's a personal venture that I am working on that is going to come to f uh, fruition. I never know if it's fruition or fruition, but I don't know how you say that word. But it's coming. It's coming into this world, hopefully by next year. So I finally achieved it. And Rocky and Sylvester Stallone have always been been there helping with that one. So the first lesson I wrote down for the film itself, I wrote down even before the, I started the film yesterday to watch it with uh, and take notes, because this is one that I just, I quote constantly to people and I'm always bringing it up. It's one of my just absolute um, favorite Rocky gems. He says it to little Marie as he's walking uh, her home. He says, you hang out with yo-yo people, you get yo-yo friends. So we all know this, um, this concept of you are the the culmination you are the average of your top five friends this is just such a, tr a true sentiment that i think people need to become a little more cognizant about and have a little more intentionality about their environments and who they're surrounding themselves with i think we get friends and we just don't question them because they're they've been our friends for a long time or the actions we do with our friends we don't question because that's just what we do but uh you you need to really examine who it is you're around and are they aligned with who you want to be? I think of the gentleman, find good friends, talk it out with good friends, find positive solutions. You need good friends that are, you know, hold common values that, that accept and um, sort of are conducive to your mission and will help you become better. I, I think about my friends. I mean, uh, my friends now are, are just they're such incredible people. I don't have that many friends. I have, I would say three really close friends and one's in the military. He's away. You know, uh, he's the one I just interviewed stoner to soldier and <laughs> that guy. Um, so I have two really close friends here that I see consistently. Um, and both of them in different ways, just they grow me and they mold me and they sculpt me into a better person through our hangouts and our, our actions together. We're a good solid team that help build each other up. Um, I found, you know, I'm trying to find, good friends, good people, become a good person. Um, but when you are hanging out and your friends, let's say all your friends just smoke weed all day and then they watch movies and then you guys are going to a bar at night. If that's the culture of your friends, well, that's, that's what you're going to, to fall into. That's going to be the, uh, you know, the ease of momentum life that you're going to fall into. So become more cognizant about your friends and, and the actions that you do with them. If they're not conducive to your goals and they're not willing to support you along your journey, then perhaps you have a yo-yo friend and you need to change that. Next lesson I've written down is it's never too late. There's a scene early on in the film where Stallone is looking at himself and the Rocky's looking at himself in the mirror and uh, you could just see this just discontentment, this sheer, uh, you know, I can't, I can't even put the right word on it but you can just see the soul sucked from this man as he's looking at himself in the mirror and his eye catches this picture of him from his childhood and there's almost this anger that starts burning because you know the character just as, as Stallone he had this thing in his heart this desire to be more he wants to prove he's not a, just another bum from the neighborhood he's had that in him he wanted to he wanted to do something with his fucking life and he's like you disappointment dude look look at you and people, I think people do really look at themselves like that sometimes and beat themselves into a bloody pulp saying you failed and you're a failure and you tell yourself this and you tell yourself you're a loser, you're a bum, then you're going to stay a loser and a bum. It's important to remember that it is never too late. Look at Rocky 2, 3, 4, 5, Rocky Balboa, Creed 1 and Creed 2. Rocky became much more than that. There was much more in him. This beast inside of you is just sleeping and waiting for you to take some action. It's not dead. And uh, I, I think that scene was just beautiful to show, like, this man was very disappointed in his life and um, he saw himself as a failure. If, it, if he was about to go to his deathbed and he, and he stayed on that trajectory, if he was on his deathbed, he would say that he, he lived a failure uh, existence. And and that's really sad. I think a lot of people never break out of that. And luckily, you know, Apollo Creed came along and there was a shot and he took it. But sometimes we have to make our own shots. The world's not going to come uh, knocking. So someone might not pick our name out of a book and, and ask us to fight. 
but we still, each of us, we can become that hero. We can become that, that Rocky. We can become more. It's never too late. Next one I have is screw people. People's opinions could matter less. Literally don't put any stock into what people say. And I don't mean don't take constructive criticism or like I said, find good friends, find positive solutions, talk things out and, and hear feedback. That's not what I mean. But critics, haters, all that stuff, the people who called Rocky a bum and a loser and washed up and just roasted this guy 24-7, even when you get into the second film and he's already fought Apollo and did a fantastic job, people are jealous now and they roast you even more for different reasons. People, people are going to be jerks. I think of two Marcus Aurelius quotes as I'm saying this, uh, the first one being, um, you know, if someone is rude and saying these types of things, that's them. That's their character. That's for them to worry about. Not me. That has nothing to do with me. And it's true. People calling Rocky a bum and roasting him, eh, deal with yourself. Rocky's going to do his own thing. And look how that turned out for him. And look how that turned out for the people roasting him. And the uh, second Marcus Aurelius quote that came to mind there is, I don't know the quote exactly, so this is going to be very paraphrased, but essentially how he said, when I wake up today, I'm going to deal with people that are mean. I'm going to deal with people that are trying to bully me. I'm going to deal with jerks. I'm going to deal with assholes. People are going to suck. That's just the thing. People, there are always going to be people out there who are just miserable and they're looking to tear people down and they're negative. Doesn't matter. Screw them. Screw them and do you and become who you need to be. Someone says you can't do it. Okay, great. Thanks. I couldn't care less. Um, Next, kind of on this negativity thing, Polly. Now, Polly's a great character. We all love Polly, but uh, in that first movie, especially, he is a he is a negative, negative world, uh, a negative person who sees the world as like he's a victim inside of it. He's just a victim mentality guy. He is the he is the absolute. The world owes me everything. What is the first thing he asks Rocky to do when in the first scene they have together? He asks him to you know, tell Gazo about me. He wants a job. He wants to be given a job. He's always asking, but he's like, no, I'm not a charity case around here. But he's always asking. He's always negative. He's always complaining. He's always bitching. Modern science has shown, actually, now that if you're constantly negative, I've talked about this on the show before, but if you're constantly negative and you're bitching and bitching and bitching, your neurobiology, whatever, I'm not a scientist, but you're like, you literally the uh, wiring in your brain will change to be much more negative than before. It'll be so quick to become negative. You'll change those pathways to become um, almost automatically negative. So the more you're negative, the more you're negative, essentially. And uh, I just always, I like to look at Polly as the uh, antithesis or the, the shadow of Rocky. Like imagine if, if Rocky did just take on the woe is me, the victim mentality, the, the world sucks kind of thing. And if you do that, see where, where Polly ends up. And we'll talk more about this when we get to Rocky Balboa. But man, that is, that is one of those, the saddest and honestly scariest lives um, to live for me uh, that I fear. Because, man, he 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 just he's just constantly complaining and and negative, and I don't even know what he wants. You know, we don't know the character on, on that extent, but I, you know, this is not the life that he imagined for himself, and this is not the life that he wants or that he um, deserves. Quite frankly, people people should have better lives, and it, it just it's upsetting that some people just complain their lives away and they become sucked up in this negative worldview. So you have to. Essentially, this lesson is make sure that you don't take on that victim card. I have a whole video about um, the victim mentality and victimhood. That it's a, it's a very slippery slope. It's a, it's a scary thing to have access to the victim card. I had one because of my health issues, and I saw that it was kind of like this get-out-of-jail-free card, and you can kind of just negate responsibility in life. And taking responsibility in life, that's like the number one key thing, I think. We all have to take responsibility, extreme ownership for ourselves, somewhere on there, extreme ownerships uh, for ourselves. And anyway, I think that's all I have to say on that one for now. Uh, this one, you act like what? Okay, so when he's talking to little Marie, he says, you don't even have to really be a whore and they're just going to call you a whore because they remember the reputation. Um, and this one to me, it reminds me that 
our actions speak much louder than our words. People can say that they're, they're believe in this or that, or they stand for this and that, and they want this and that for you. Don't listen to their words as much as you listen to their actions. We don't. We, uh, we put much more stock in what we see. And again, for us, we are what we repeti uh, repetitively, repetitively do. The actions that you do consistently on a routine basis, that's who you become. In your head, you might be, let's think of this example. Um, my friend Dom kind of put this in my head. This is sort of his idea. But let's say you're a writer. I can think, oh, I'm a writer. I like to write. Oh, I, li I like writing. I'm a writer. But unless you're actually putting pen to paper and writing, you are not a writer. So our actions speak way louder than our words. And who we are is, uh, you know, to the world is only determined by that. Your thoughts don't matter to, you know, whoever walking down the street who sees you. So be cognizant of the, of the actions you're actually putting into the world. And this is uh, similar to a concept I talk about in the internal father technique that I, I came up with that you need to monitor yourself and see if your actions and behaviors are in line with your thoughts and who you want to be. So oftentimes we find out that without having that, that, uh, that time to really introspectively detach and, and look at it, we're not who we think we are. It's crazy. We really aren't. And, um, you don't want to live the life that's not yours. So monitor yourself and make sure you're maybe make sure your actions line up. Next is uh, for Adrian. Don't let your shyness keep you from having your life. So remember the Thanksgiving scene when they're about to go on their first date ice skating. She she locks herself in the room and, and Rocky's trying to kind of convince her to come out. He's like, you want to go on a date with me? Imagine if she was too shy, just a little more shy than she was and didn't go out, didn't leave that room. She would live a, we saw her life. It was a very full, happy life. She became, and we're going to get to that. She blossomed, man. She really did blossom and become, she came into her potential. She became more. And if she would have stayed in there because of shyness and she let that hold her back, who knows what her life would have been. It would have been miserable. She would have been with Polly who would have just been roasting her and, and driving her to the brink of insanity because we see, and we'll get to this scene as well, the, the scene where she says, you know, she grabs him up and, and screams at him. So that was in her. And that would have built and built and built and built. But people who never break out of their shell, break out of that comfort zone, they just let that build and fester into a poison that spills out to everyone in the world. And this, you know, you see them, they're miserable. Their faces are miserable. They, everything they say is negative. They become the polys. She might've been turned into a poly if she hadn't pushed herself out of her comfort zone. And since she did, she got an amazing life. And that's it's just a, a good lesson that I need to tell myself too. I'm a very introverted person, a very shy person. I don't like, um, I don't like situations that I don't know how to perfectly navigate already in my mind space. I like to stay comfortable in that sense. And that's not good. That's where I lose um, the ability to grow and become a better and best version of myself. I need to keep expanding out of what is comfortable. Okay, so next. So it sounds. Okay, so this one is, is nice. S similar lines. Uh, nice lesson about not letting opportunities and um, okay, so don't let your fear hold you back. Stallone, Iraqi, he does not accept the fight. When when Apollo Creed first, you know, his manager offers him the fight, says, "Do you want to fight for the heavyweight title?" He's like, "No." And it's similar to in King Arthur, he rejects the sword for a long time. Our potential is very scary, and a lot of us do have this sort of resistance to it for whatever reason, you know, fear. And in, in the, Rock, the case of Rocky, and at least in my paradigm from my lens, because this is, like I said, when you watch it with your lens, you will see it um, and get lessons that are pertinent to you, and, and they'll be tailor-made for you. This is just kind of how entertainment and films, books, they work. We all see them in different lights. 
But to me, I see it as a self-esteem issue, a self-doubt. I think that Rocky suffers from depression. Uh, in the beginning of this film, he's in, you know, he's in a very melancholic state, and I think that he suffers from this this plague of self-doubt. And so he doesn't feel like he ha is worth a shot at the title. He His low self-esteem is saying, like, how am I even worth that? I'm not. I don't have that kind of value. And he's saying, I, of course, won't win um, because of the fear and things like that involved. And if he would have not, same thing, same with Adrian not leaving the, uh, the room and going on that date. Imagine if Rocky didn't accept that fight. They said, okay, he's not going to do it. We have to go with someone else. What's Bill Weathers doing? Whatever. If he would have passed on that and let that one opportunity slip, you know, where does his life go? So we can't let the fear, as, as, as terrifying as it may seem, as large of an opponent as you may be facing, Apollo freaking Creed might be wanting to cream your face with his fist. It doesn't matter. You have to be brave and you have to push forward with courage and take on that, that fight so that you can have the life that you deserve. In the life that you desperately want to have. Uh, next is just kind of quickly, str you're stronger than you know, because when he did accept it, we saw how the fight went. He pushed himself and he became more, and, and that fight didn't go so bad for him. He didn't win. That's not that important. We'll get to that too. But you are much stronger than you give yourself credit for. We all are. We limit ourselves and we dump on ourselves our, with our internal talk all the time. But it's so easy for us to tell other people, oh, you got this. You're stronger than you think. It's so much easier for us to say, do this or do that to someone else. But as Jordan Peterson says, we need to start treating ourselves as we do someone we care about. You are as wonderful as you see everyone else. You are just as strong and fantastic, so you got this. All right. Take the leap. Trust yourself. And uh, sort of similar on that note, Adrian says, Einstein dropped out of school. Beethoven was dead. Uh, deaf, Helen Keller, blind and deaf. She said Rocky has a good chance. And I think that's it's just cool, you know. No matter the odds, no matter what kind of obstacles you might be facing, whatever kind of terrible life circumstance, whatever kind of terrible cards or hand you've been dealt in life, you could do it. You absolutely can. There's as long as you have a beating heart in here. That's all you need. As long as you have a beating heart, you got a chance, and um, you have a good chance. You just got to keep pushing. You got to keep fighting. Persistence, persistence. It's basically more than half the battle. They say that uh, the enemy of success is boredom most of the time, is that you'll just lose that motivation, lose the eye of the tiger, as we'll talk about in Rocky III, um, and you just kind of wane out of it and, and give up. But it's those who can keep pushing and keep pushing who can, who can make it. People aren't born with this incredible talent. Um, R.C. Walden said, you know, the creative genius never existed. Uh, Ulysses, that um, the author, James Joyce, crying on the floor, thinking about how he, can, he can't even put six words together. And now that's a great American um, literary classic. So I don't even know if it's American, but it's a literary classic is my point. So Ernest Hemingway has that quote, actually. He said, uh, you know, you put in all the work and, and do what you have to do. Screw them. They can think that you were born that way. <laughs> but the, and nobody is. So just believe in yourself and, f and fight forward. Fight through the failures. Fail better. Fail better. Fail better until you have something uh, of success to hold on to. Now, next is Rocky says in the scene when he's getting uh, interviewed and, you know, Polly and him or Polly, Adrian and him are watching this on the TV. Polly's asking him, like, if, if it um, if it bothers him that they're kind of roasting him the way they are and making him out to be an idiot. And Rocky says that I said that stuff on TV didn't bother me none. It did. He says that to Adrian later in the scene because to Polly, he was like, no, it doesn't bother me. Nothing bothers me. But to Adrian. Uh, in confidence, he said, it, do it does bother me. And the message here is that you have to have someone to talk to. Um, now, we, I understand that everyone can't be lucky enough to have a significant other or even close friends. Some people feel like they have no one. Um, but we need, we need someone to talk to. Absolutely 
a necessity to be able to get those things out, the things that you can't say in front of the world, but the things that you can say to that one person. You need to have that. And um, there are people like me, um, I'm in clinical mental health counseling, whose heart, it literally beats to help people. We are here. We are legitimately here on this earth to help you and to serve you and to talk to you in that way. So those who say, I have nobody, you have me. You have the other clinical mental health counseling people around you. Um, this is literally what we're meant for. We're built for. And we want, we want nothing more than to get your call and to talk to you. So I, real quick, I want to jump over to this book called Suicide. This is Suicide Prevention Month right now. So I'm putting this in here. It's called Suicide, um, The Forever Decision. And this is along those lines of, of these people who, whose hearts beat to talk to you. Our hearts beat to be that person for you. He says, I have told them, uh, talking about suicidal individuals, that we are as two people on a ship that is lost at sea. And so far as we know, the captain has fallen up overboard and no one is at the helm. The radio is out. There's a heavy fog all around us and no one can see where we are bound. We can see no beacon of light from a friendly shore. We can hear no sound of a rescue ship. One of us is terribly frightened. The other of us, me, is also frightened, but a little less so. I'm a little less frightened because I have something to do to keep me busy. I have a job to do. My job is to give comfort until we have found, or till we are found, or until the fog clears away and we can both see clearly again. But this is a two-way relationship. For me to feel good about giving support, comfort, and encouragement, I need you to be willing to hang on, not jump overboard, because your fear of the unknown is greater than your fear of the here and now. And so together, we will share our fear, and, this, and in this sharing, we will come to know each other. We will talk and joke and tell each other stories and be kind to one another. We may not soon be rescued, and we may never be, but while we are lost, we will be together. Together, our fears will subside, and we will have a purpose in our being. So, even if you feel like I have nobody at all, know that that is not true. Because this guy, this guy, millions of other ones out there want nothing more than to talk to you. You're never alone, all right? Okay, so now uh, the next thing I have written down is... There are no second chances, as Mickey says. Um, it's kind of a life motto. I think that's a, a, really a really nice life motto that I'm going to start ingraining into my mind a little bit more is that there are no second chances. No second chances. So we have to fight like hell when we get that opportunity. When that one chance comes by, we not only can't let fear hold us back, but we have to give it fucking everything we have to fight with every ounce of our being because that might be all we have this might be our only chance every day could be the last another marcus aurelius you could leave this earth at any moment let that decide how you live think and act something along those lines um a very important life lesson right there okay and speaking of mickey find a mentor don't go at it alone okay there are people who have been to where you have, you know, who, where you want to go. There are people who have done it and mastered it. So find these people, learn from these people. With today's modern uh, technology, podcasts, you can learn from the greatest of the great. Master classes exist. You can learn from the best of the best. It's crazy. So don't do this alone. Don't try to take everything up on yourself. Learn from other people. Be humble enough. And this, you know, you're going to say, are you contradicting yourself? No, when I said people suck, screw people, don't listen to their opinions. Like I said, that's not what I meant in finding a mentor. Find someone who, as Mickey says, I got all this shit up here, and I want to make sure that the same stuff that happened to me doesn't happen to you. Find someone who does support and um, can help mold you into the best version of yourself. Stop emailing me. Um, so the steps are... The steps, okay, in the film where he runs up, I think these are the metaphor for uh, for the actual fight. And that's the internal you versus you that Rocky, all of the films, I think, sort of go back to. The fights don't matter. 
he doesn't even win in the first Rocky, but that's not it. He does win, and it's, he wins those steps. You can see the first time he runs up those, man, he is, like, weak and defeated. He walks away broken, holding his side. It's, it's, not, it's not glorious at all. It's, it's, um, he's pretty down on himself at that point. You can see it. He's like, oh, man, I'm not – I don't have it in me. And that's the fight. I think that's the fight is him finding um, the knowledge that he is more than just a bum in the, in the neighborhood, proving it to himself. The other people, he realizes that's not even what it's about. It's about proving it to him damn, his damn self. Because he runs that at the end of the, you know, during the training montage and he's jumping and it's that famous scene. That is the culmination of Rocky's growth as a character. And that is the point where, where, uh, where he's won. At that point, he's won when he runs up those steps and gives victory, um, you know, gives that victory for you. Yeah. So I think that, uh, that we need to remember that sometimes we can't get the subjective win from the world, but that's not what it's about. So I'm going to wait for that one because I'm going to talk about that uh, in a little bit in greater detail. But, uh, but we'll get there. Next is the gaps quote, dude. Okay, so I just had to add this. This is my favorite love quote ever. And I'm getting married soon. I'll probably have it somewhere in my wedding somewhere. I'm going to have to incorporate it. But, you know, he says, I don't know, I got gaps, she got gaps, together we fill gaps. And that's just, to me, that's just like what love is. You have to find someone that... um, builds you up better and that you build up better you you and her together you know two guys together it doesn't matter you and your partner together that you need you need to build each other up and and fill those gaps that you have um as with rocky and adrian you know he's he's that outgoing talks to everyone how you do make jokes knows the street corner guys knows everyone and she's the reclusive very shy uh individual and and so they come together and they have those gaps and she teach him, teaches him how to read in the second one, things like that. So they fill each other's gaps and they build each other up and become stronger individuals um, on their own, right? It's not this codependent weird relationship where they need each other or anything like that. It's this interdependent relationship where they each are these strong individuals growing stronger every day, growing stronger together. You see this in the red coat heartbreaker scene, right? Where he sees Adrian. She's wearing this red coat with this uh, fur. I mean, it's a, it's something that she would never have worn in the beginning of the film. And she's got that confidence. You see, she's standing up higher, all shoulders back. She's wearing this outfit that grabs attention. And he says, you know, you're a heartbreaker. Um, so she, he really brought Adrian out of her shell in this film. And that is what the Gaps quote means to me is, is building – your partner up better and having a partner that builds you up better. Don't be in some toxic relationship that, uh, you know, tries to hold you down and cut you off and sort of suffocate the greatness within you. Find someone who lets you blossom and helps you blossom uh, into the best version of yourself. And I love that quote. And I love what Rocky and Adrian have. Um, So she brings out the best in him and he brings out the best in her. So find out who brings out the best in you. Uh, and then again, the culmination of her coming out of her shell, Adrian finally stands up to Polly. You know, what do I owe you? I cook for you. I clean for you. Take care of you. You made me feel like a loser. I'm not a loser. Dude, that scene almost made me cry the other day when she screams, I'm not a loser. Like people, the negative people out there, the Polly's and things like that, they will try to make you feel absolutely worthless. There are people out there who are going to try to bully you into taking your own life, essentially. You know, people literally kill themselves because they're bullied. People are made to feel like idiots and made to feel like they're worth nothing, like they are these losers, but they're fucking not. Go back to the Marcus Aurelius quote, that's on them, but it's hard to see that. And when you've just been massacred your whole life by somebody it really breaks you down it really makes you second guess your worth and that's another thing that um rocky gives adrian is this unconditional positive regard but this is something that does not necessarily need to be given by a romantic relationship but unconditional positive regard is a concept brought up by carl rogers um he does person-centered therapy he's like a founder of that 
And this is what is so powerful about therapy. Um, unconditional positive regard is this love unconditionally. Without conditions of worth, you are just loved and accepted. Um, you know, you don't owe them anything. You don't have to cook clean and, and take care of them for them to appreciate you. And if you fall out of line, then you're a whore and you're busted in that scene. Like, without conditions of worth, you are loved. We get that from our parents sometimes if we're lucky to have that. Um, that is where most people get it if they are lucky to have loving parents. But it doesn't matter in our heads psychologically to get it from our parents, not in the same way as getting it from uh, an external individual because we expect it from our parents. We think they have no other choice. Obviously, you love me. Uh, you gave birth to me. And that's what's so powerful about um, therapy is you're getting unconditional positive regard from a counselor. So if you don't have a significant other who loves you without uh, conditions of worth, if you haven't yet found an individual to have a romantic relationship with, get some counseling because having unconditional positive regard, allowing you to accept yourself where you are is some of the most, uh, it's the most powerful drug out there. Uh, and you'll see some incredible change in your life if you get that. This comes from Carl Rogers book on becoming a person. He says, when I accept myself as I am, then I change. We cannot move away from what we are until we thoroughly accept what we are, then change seems to come about almost unnoticed. And uh, I think that's brilliant that you see how you see that in the film. Uh, you see Rocky accept her and love her and show her her worth. And then she says, you know what? I am someone who's worth loving. I can be somebody who's loved. Well, you, Paul, you're a dick bag. I don't deserve this. It's awesome. It's awesome. All right. Now, the boxer at rest, that tattoo I talked about the other day um, with Dom. That is kind of the, the same message here in Rocky. He loses the fight. But is he a loser? Absolutely not, dude. It's the most motivational movie of all time. He won. He won because he won that internal battle, battle the you versus you. He fought his heart out. And at the end of the day, what's victory? What is victory? Seriously, the subjective world will try to tell you who and what you are. But you have to say, fuck off. Excuse my language. But seriously, the subjective world will say, no, Rocky lost, sucks. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. There's this, this is inner world like that, that we have to be fighting for. This is the victory is him finding love with Adrian, finding uh, self-esteem in himself and, and becoming the best version of himself. He, even if he didn't win, he trained his ass off. He became a way better boxer. He's in way better shape. And he fought his heart out. He fought the best fight that he could possibly fight. And he gave it all. He didn't let fear hold him back. And he just stayed and said, no, I don't want to fight Apollo. He, he said, you know what? I'll do it. Let's do it. And he took on that challenge. And he didn't just go through it saying, I'm probably going to lose anyway. And just He put every bit of his being into that fight. And he ultimately lost didn't matter didn't matter one bit that's just incredible and it reminds me of the boxer at rest because at the end of the day when if you've done what you've needed to do and you've put all that you could in something and you gave your best then hold your fucking head up high because it's all you can do that's all you can do in this world it's the best that you have so there's this quote i wanted to uh, sort of wrap up with from Stallone himself. Look at this unprepared dick bag. You know, I even have a quote up. He said, I believe there's an inner power that makes winners or losers. And the winners are the ones who really listen to the truth of their hearts. And so we see that with the meta lesson of Rocky and Stallone, right? He listened to that. And he became who we know him as. He became this infamous, per or not infamous, but he became this ultra famous dude with a statue made of his character uh, because he fought for what he believed in um, with his inner power you have to fight that million to one shot you have to fight your million to one shot there is greatness in you there is something that you want to do that you've always wanted to do that's been gnawing in the back of your mind you know rocky wanted to prove that he was just another he wasn't just another bum from the neighborhood and he, uh, you know, now he, you know, now he knows that he was more, 
And you could do that same thing. You can, you can find that same courage. And I implore you to find that same courage. Take on whatever fight it is in you and start working towards your Rocky. Um, so that's Rocky One, a few lessons. It's just an incredible film. I can't wait to, to get Rocky Two going with you guys. Leave comments below uh, about lessons that you've taken from Rocky um, and let me know. Or share this, please, with Rocky fans. Not because I want more views or anything like that, but I legit love Rocky so much. I would love to talk to other Rocky fans, get other Rocky fan perspectives, and just kind of build a Rocky community. Because, shit, Rocky's the, just the best movie in the world, I swear to God. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys soon with Rocky too.